This is part two of my scuba diving adventure to dive with the manta rays at Stradbroke Island just off the coast of southeast Queensland in Australia. But as you'll see in this video, which is combined footage from dives one and two, there's a lot more to see at Stradbroke Island than just manta rays. By the time the morning dive crew had returned at 11.30, the grey clouds had given way to blue skies and sunshine, and myself and my dive buddies were eager to get into the water. The morning dive crew had certainly wet our appetites, with reports of many mantas being seen. Ken, the business owner and skipper of the boat, is certainly a busy guy. He'd been out already since just after dawn with the guys and girls from the house next to us, and if you listen closely, you can actually hear the dive compressor filling up their tanks ready to go for the next day. The changeover from morning divers to afternoon divers went smoothly and everyone just lent a hand to load up the boat. The beach that the boats launch from is just a short 10 minute stroll from the house so myself and two of my dive buddies opted to walk down there while the rest of the crew jumped into the back of the 4x4. As we approached the water we could see that the northerly wind was still blowing quite strong and uh, although the waves weren't big I figured it was going to be quite a difficult task getting the boat back into the water. A quick pan around of the beach and it was surprisingly busy for an Australian beach. Remembering of course that the Australian population is a little bit over 23 million people and the Australian coastline length is a total of 35,877 kilometres or 22,293 miles. And that doesn't include the islands. Watching Ken launch the boat for the first time it was obvious he'd done it once or twice before. The first priority is to get the nose of the boat turned around and facing into the oncoming waves and then drag it out into waist deep water where we can safely put the ladder down for everybody to clamber aboard. Once everybody was on board it was happy smiles all around and then Ken gave us the obligatory safety briefing and we headed past the surf zone onto our dive destination which was Manta Bommy. For this dive weekend I'd been buddied up with Chris who was relatively new to diving with about 20 dives under his belt but he was a very confident diver and we made a great team. At Manta Bommy with the anchor dropped Ian gave us a dive briefing and my dive buddy Chris eagerly threw himself overboard. And I wasn't far behind. Doing the short surface swim to the anchor line, I looked up at the sky and I could see a huge storm front slowly moving in, which later that evening would give us a spectacular display of lightning, which you can see at the end of this video. We dropped into 7.2 meters of water, which is 23.5 feet, and the temperature at this depth was 23 degrees. But as we got deeper into the dive, it dropped to 22 degrees, which is 71.5 Fahrenheit. The first thing we saw was one of my favourite sea creatures, an octopus, who looked like he was sitting on a front porch of his house just watching the world go by, and he had no intention of coming out to play. But that was okay, because there were plenty more octopus in the ocean. This one was out on the hunt, and as I approached he began giving me all sorts of signals and colour changes and skin texture changes. I also have a mental conflict with octopus. On the one hand, I see them as a very intelligent, fascinating, beautiful creature. On the other hand, they are very tasty. No doubt there'll be some comments about that, but hey, that's my thought process.
As you can see from the skin color changes and texture changes, he's definitely trying to give me some sort of signal because normally an octopus would just try and blend into the background, but there's definite signals happening here. Eventually he got bored with me and just disappeared into the tiniest little hole between the two rocks. At Mantabomi there were plenty of turtles to see as well, and this one has got to be the crustiest turtle I've ever seen. And by that I don't mean he was in a bad mood, I mean he was coated. His shell had a big growth of green algae on the back and his head and flippers were coated in barnacles. I think this guy needs to visit a cleaning station at some point. As my dive buddy Chris moved in to get some photos, Krusty the turtle decided he'd had enough and was heading off into the wild blue yonder. There was so much to see at Mantabomi, it was difficult to know where to look first. But after we left Krusty, we started this serious search for manta rays. Normally at this dive site there's a lot more visibility and the water has a lot more clarity. The vis on this day was about 6 to 8 meters, but the clarity of the water was pretty poor, which made spotting mantas quite difficult. At first the mantas were just tantalizing dark shapes, moving just outside of vision range. However, slowly but surely, they got closer to us. Waiting for more mantas to appear, I spotted this big guy. He would have made a tasty dinner for two quite easily. And as I followed him around, I spotted my next manta. Again, just tantalizingly out of range for good visuals. But what I could see underneath this one was what appeared to be the outline of a shark. Sadly, the distance and the lack of water clarity made it impossible for me to see what kind of shark it was. But my disappointment was soon forgotten as I turned around and hey presto, another beautiful manta came in. This one's got a very short tail you'll notice. These beautiful and graceful creatures pose absolutely no threat to humans. They are a plankton feeder and unlike their cousins the stingrays, the manta rays have no sting in their tail. You may also notice that the underside of the mantas are different colors. Some are pure white, some are pure black, and some are a mixture of white and black. And these markings are unique to each individual manta ray. Here you can see this one is mostly black underneath with a few white markings. As I filmed this one, I had a first for me was the first time ever that I was pooed on by a manta ray. But I didn't let that stop me following and filming. And the trail of poo is coming around about now. Another first for me on this dive was seeing a frogfish. Now you have to look closely if you want to spot this one. It's reddish brown in color and it's about the size of your thumbnail. But you can just make out the mouth and eyes. So cute!
I had planned to film just the big stuff on this trip to Mantabomi, but I think technically this blue starfish falls into the category of big. As you can see, as I put my finger into frame for a size comparison, it's a fairly big sized starfish. Around the next corner, I wandered into a clownfish complex. Yep, that's what it's called. When you get a bunch of clownfish all living in harmony together, it's called a clownfish complex. And these are Clark's clownfish. When they grow to full size, they can reach a length of 15 centimeters, which is about five and a half inches. Another fascinating thing about the anemone fish in general is they are also called singing fish as they will make a chirping or popping noise and each different species has its own different dialect. This species, the Clark's clownfish, has been known to make louder and more frequent noises than the other species and its songs can even be heard through the glass of a marine aquarium. I'm not making this stuff up. Moving away from the clownfish complex, I spotted this guy on his own, living in his anemone, and defending it quite vigorously. I also got the chance to get up close and personal with a couple of the more dangerous creatures on this dive. Here we can see a lionfish in its protective defensive stance, the spines pointing outwards towards what it considers to be a threat. This is a common lionfish, and this species has extremely venomous fin spines. All 13 dorsal fin spines, the one pelvic fin spine, and the three anal fin spines are all venomous. However, as you can see, when it's disturbed by a scuba diver, this fish makes no effort to swim away. Instead, it just points its dorsal fin spines towards the perceived intruder. Taking a quote from someone who has been stung by a lionfish, they said, it won't kill you, but it will make you wish you were dead. Beautiful and dangerous at the same time. That's the lionfish. This not so beautiful looking creature is a reef stonefish and it holds the prestigious title of being the most venomous fish in the world with 13 stout spines along the dorsal fin which can inject a highly toxic venom causing lots of intense pain and it's actually believed to have killed many Pacific and Indian Ocean Islanders. However, no deaths have been recorded in Australia since the Europeans arrived. And an anti-venom was developed in 1959, which further reduces the likelihood of death. <laughs> Again, it's not a creature that's going to swim away or attack in a predatory fashion. It simply relies on its camouflage. That's a face only a mother could love. Sea stars are a common feature in my scuba diving videos and I had to show you this one. This is called a pin cushion sea star and if you're old enough to remember what a pin cushion looks like I think you'll agree with me it's aptly named. I'm not sure whether it's got short stubby arms or whether it's got a big fat body that's expanded to absorb the arms. But these pincushion starfish are quite big. Even with my finger in the picture frame, it's hard to get a scale of the size of these things, but they are bigger than the size of two palms and totally beautiful to look at. This second pincushion sea star was at a slightly different depth, hence the reason why the colors look so different. Another star of the show that I'd put on my list to tick off while diving at Mantabomi was the leopard shark. And this beautiful specimen was around about 2 meters in length. On average they grow to around about 2.4 meters but can be up to 3.5 meters. They're a very sluggish shark and not at all aggressive or dangerous to humans. They're also cousins to the wobbegong and the whale shark. As it swims away you can see that the tail is almost half the length of its entire body. The leopard shark feeds mostly on snails and slugs and mollusks, but sometimes crustaceans and small fish are eaten as well. As the shark exited left, I swam after the right, and then a couple of seconds later, he came swimming past me again. Of all the different species in the pufferfish family, the porcupine fish has got to be my absolute favorite. With his beautiful big eyes and a beautiful big mouth, it just looks so cute and cuddly and adorable. Getting towards the end of our time underwater, my dive buddy Chris spotted another great octopus out in the open. Changing his skin texture to try and blend into the background, changing his skin color in an instant, 
totally, totally fascinating. The octopus has got to be one of the best chameleons of the ocean. Chris and I had surfaced a little bit away from our boat, ours was the one that was furthest away, but I indicated to the guy on this boat that we were okay. As I said earlier on in the video, I'll include full details of both of these dives in the description down below. With our first two dives at Manta Bomi under our belt, Chris and I had a lot of notes to compare as we did our surface swim back to our boat. And that evening at the local pub, as we all enjoyed dinner and watched the spectacular lightning storm, every one of my dive buddies had a great set of stories to tell. Remember to watch to the end of this video as I share some of the lightning storm footage in slow-mo. If you enjoyed this scuba diving adventure with Q, please subscribe to the YouTube channel to see some more, leave a like on the videos you do like, and leave your comments. As soon as I see those, I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching, and take it easy.